I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 3. Let's focus on verses 8 and 9. For Jerusalem stumbled and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The look on their countenance witnesses against them and they declare their sin as Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to their soul for they have brought evil upon themselves. You know, just because I've written songs for a living, which include melodically rhyming words and ideas, doesn't mean that I like poetry. (laughs) I like writing songs. I don't really dig poetry. I've never purchased a book of poetry, nor do I have any plans to. So I identify with the frustration of many folks who had to endure the past six months of these poetic books of the Bible. And the cry is typically, when can we get back to something with a concrete narrative, right? Abstract thinking is not easy for most people. Most people are not poetic. We like stories. And the problem is the story that we pick up on in Isaiah is not a continuation of the positive deliverance stories that we left way back in Nehemiah and Esther. After a sizable measure of wisdom and poetry, we are dumped smack into a serious prediction of destruction. And it was this exact destruction that led to the cries for deliverance in Nehemiah and Esther's day. We are going way back in Israel's history so that we can learn that God doesn't bluff. God doesn't bluff. God knows his people need a poetic reminder of his graceful wisdom and his melodious majesty before they're bombarded again with the hard, sin-revealing truths of the rest of the Old Testament. So the prophetic party pooper is this guy named Isaiah. And that is what prophetic preaching is in the end, right? I mean, it's sobriety in the midst of a drunken stupor. So tell me, who welcomes the voice of wisdom and righteousness that takes the needle off the record at a party and declares, somebody has to pay this enormous bill that you guys have been running up at the bar. The wine that the people had drank was not France's finest. It was the wine of worldliness. And Isaiah was one of several men whom the Lord called to collect on the people's sin debt and to remind them, hey, I don't think you can pay this. Today's message from Isaiah is simple. Because the church, Jerusalem, has stumbled, then the nation, Judah, is fallen. And that is about as relevant of a message as you can hear in our generation. And yet, in the midst of judgment, God's people are still offered a word of encouragement. But this was only encouragement for true believers, not for false ones. The false ones won't take it. They won't believe it. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Say to the righteous that it shall be well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. And woe to the wicked, for it will be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given to him. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O my people, those who lead you cause you to err, and they destroy the way of your paths. So the word of God through Isaiah is often misunderstood as preaching on behalf of a God who cannot be pleased. And that is simply untrue. Isaiah's words must not be misconstrued as anything other than God's grace. Sounds like judgment to me. No, he's pronouncing judgment that'll come if you don't repent. That's grace. God's first choice for his people is always to plead for their repentance. Isaiah 3, verse 13, The Lord stands up to plead, and he stands to judge the people. On one sense, he's pleading with them to return, but he's also saying, but I will judge. God's grace, by the way, is worthless unless it offers the only shelter from a certain impending judgment. And surely you feel that judgment mounting in our generation. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. And I would say this, the right time to do the right thing is always right now. 
And the right thing is to always return to the Lord. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Now, Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And yes, we need your monthly support. Donating is secure, and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. You know, another way to help is tell people about us. You can share these podcasts with friends and family on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com. 